Hi everybody, Jo here again. Thanks so much for popping in. I hope you're feeling okay. Hope you had a, a lovely weekend. Today, I thought we'd have fun mixing some of our new stamps with some of our older stamps. And I'm really into doing these lovely sort of monochromatic card designs, but with just a, a pop of colour. And today, I thought I'd go for a sort of an orange, an orange a pink colour. The reason I say orange is when I started the design I thought orange would be the obvious choice and I thought well I won't go with orange I'll mix it up and use pink and lo and behold I go and say orange just shows it was on my mind I think because obviously we associate autumn pumpkins anyway so I've gone for pink as you can see <laughs> but I think this would look fabulous with any colour and I wanted to team, I was looking at what stamps I'd got that I could mix and match with some of the new release and I just thought, you know, often we hear sort of, you know, in a witch's cauldron there's usually a frog somewhere, isn't there, or a toad so I went for my lovely little small frog here and I thought with him having wings is so magical and I've teamed up one of our lovely sticker sentiments here. Now, if you've not seen these, these are our new, the set six, and they're our lovely, lovely sticker sentiments. I'm just going to pop that out of the way. And you get three sheets in them. The same words on each or phrases. One's white, one's black, and one's almost a vintage, a sort of buff colour. And I've got to be honest, the fabulous look. You can tell how many I've been using. And I just thought there's a most brilliant one, blow away the cobwebs. And I thought that went so well with me having my sort of cobweb web arch at the top of the design. I mean, I love these. So they're sticker, sentiment stickers six. And I'm going to put mine in there and I like to keep them all together. So what we'll do, we'll start off with a piece of multifarious card. And again, you know I love this pack that has three sizes in. And we're going to use the A6 size. Because I do listen to comments and a few of you have told me that it's extra postage if the square cards. And normally I do use square cards. So I thought I'm going to listen to you and we'll, we'll do a different, different, uh, we'll go oblong or rectangle. Anyway, it's not square. <laughs> Do you know, I'm having one of those days today. My brain's in sort of overload. I don't know why. Do you ever have days like that? When I was little, my mum used to say I had verbal diarrhoea. Well, not very nice saying, is it? But um, but I know what she meant. My, my, I just can't stop talking. But most of it's rubbish. Anyway, I'm not helping you, am I? You might want to switch off. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to start with a little bit of stamping. And I'm going to come in with this lovely, playful pumpkin. And I'm going to use my black Versafine Claire ink. So this is the Nocturne. And as I say, I wanted a, a mainly monochromatic design for this. So a nice bit of ink. And then I'm thinking, we want him at the base, sort of in this corner. So we'll pop him, pop him there. Now I have already made a mask for him from one of the videos I did the other day. So all I've done for this is I've got our lovely Lavinia masking sheets and you stamp on the tissue side. The acetate, the clear, is just like a carrier sheet. And... I must admit, I always keep these on the back of my acetate for whatever stamp set it is. And then they're always there ready with the stamp when I need it. And you can reuse these again and again. So I'm just going to pop that there. And then I'm going to stamp the lovely set of books, The Wizardry. big fan of this stamp set mind you I love books I know sort of it's very on trend to do a lot of things online and read online but I love a nice book I think just the touch the feel the smell and I know I'm not the only one I know it's not weird to like the smell of old books anyway 
So I'm thinking I'm going to stamp these here and I want them to just, I'm going to put them slightly higher because I want them to be behind our lovely pumpkin, which is why we're stamping first. So when we're stamping and masking, so if you're one of our lovely new followers, you stamp whatever's in the front first. And then by masking it off, it will hide it and the books will appear behind. And as I say, I've got a little mask for the wizardry and I just keep it on the acetate. This I keep my stamp on. So I'll peel that off. And we're going to add that there. Now, in fact, before I do that at the top, I just want to stamp my lovely small frog. So I won't stick it down at the top. We'll just stamp him in place. It's one of those things when you do a design like this, you almost have to think about your recipe and the order that you're going to stamp. So I want him on top of the book. So excuse me, but my head might just come in in shot. I just want to get him there. I suppose he could be leapfrogging over. So there we go. If he's not sat on top, that's what he's doing. He's leapfrogging over the books. Oh no, we've got him perched nicely there. So we'll pop the mask on the books. And the reason I want to do this is when I was thinking about this design, I was thinking of sort of a bit like, um, you know, a sort of creepy sort of mystical place. And for me, there's always ivy. And it's funny when we take our grandchildren, the little boys down the woods, um, Elliot always calls it creeping ivy and we once told him that granddad doesn't like creeping ivy so now he teases him that the creeping ivy is going to get him so that's what I had in mind and so I looked out and got my lovely trailing ivy stamp look and I'm going to stamp some of this and I want it to look like it's behind the design and again I'm keeping with the black So I'm thinking we can have one here, maybe a little bit of second generation there. And you can decide how much or how little. And I'm just putting, because it's at this shape, I don't want to, even though I haven't put any ink on here, you know, there may just be some from last time. Hopefully not, because I clean them, but I do worry, you know, I don't want to get any stamping where I don't want it so belt and braces I'm adding extra copy of paper so we'll pop some I can tell I've used this books mask a lot so we'll pop some ivy over this side we'll have it creeping at the bottom like it does. Right, let's have a look. So we need a little bit on this side now at the bottom. Just creeping out there and there and then maybe just a little just coming out under there right let's lift it up and have a look yes i like i like that so what i'm going to do so that was the trailing ivy i'm just going to blot all that because versifying claire try and get in the habit of blotting it but also on the masking sheet i found it dry slower so i don't want it to smudge you know any that i've got on that that masking sheet so good habit we'll give it a good a good rub And then we're just going to add some Lavinia low tack tape. Just to make these sort of panels down the side. And we'll go straight in with one side, turn it round and the other side. And then we're just going to add some colour and I've got a couple of the elements. So I've got the graphite and the midnight blue and I'm going to use two of my brushes, the larger one and then the smaller, the number three. So I'll start off with the graphite and we're just going to 
pop it in the lid and I'm just going to blend a little bit of colour just come in from the tape. I find if I always go on the tape first, just to start off with that nice light, just to take the whiteness off the design. So we've got a little bit of background colour. Really moody colour this look. I don't know if you can see, just takes that, that whiteness off. And then what I'm going to do, I wanted to do that first before I introduce the, the fairy web, the cobweb stamp. And I almost want to make this so it looks a bit like an arch. Those of you of a certain age, see I'm thinking of an arched window. Does that mean anything to any of you? Circular, was it a circular square and an arched window we used to look through? For those of you that are not in the UK, it was a, a television programme. I would say when I was little, but I think I'm still little. Hmm. So I want to almost make this arch here. So I'm going to use my fairy web. So if I stamp it sort of so it's in the middle is what I'm looking for. So we'll go for that there. And then see if we can replicate it on, on this side. So if I can join that up there and go to a similar sort of place on my tape. Lovely. Now, there's a little bit there, obviously, where it hasn't quite caught, but not to worry, because I've got a black fine liner, and look, we can just follow that there, and nobody will ever know. Got a little bit here, and we can just... There we go. Because you won't tell them, and I won't tell them. And we'll give that a blot as well. So how are you doing? I, I hope you're keeping okay. I know a few of you have been in touch and said you've had rough days recently. So as always, a nice big hug if you need one. Even if you're just a bit busy, you know, or feeling a bit down. I think sometimes we can all almost expect too much from ourselves. And we do get really busy, don't we? So, you know, let's just slow down and take five minutes. So while we're having a hug, I'm going to stamp one of the small lanterns just hanging down from the middle of the arch. Again, keeping with the black. So I'm thinking about there. Lovely. And then also we want to stamp our little, from a, the butterfly set, now there's four on this set. And again, I used the acetate to decide which one. And I was thinking, although these are butterflies in my head today, I hope you don't mind butterfly, but you're going to be a moth. And you're just going to be a moth circling round that, that lantern. You know how they do, so I'm just putting that there. Lovely. And that's the majority, that's my stamping done. So again, we'll give that a little blot because I just want to add a little more ink in that area. And like I say, I don't want to smudge my lovely butterfly, aka moth for today. And I want to introduce one of my, my circle masks. So we want the hint of the moon. So I'm thinking, now I could spotlight the frog or I could make almost a spotlight from the lantern, but I think it just looks spooky if we have the moon. So possibly there I'm thinking, just poking through there, yeah, lovely. And what I'm going to do is come in with my graphite first to see how much, just to give a light. Almost to give me a base. And then I'm going to come in with, get the big guns out. So this is Midnight Blue. I love this colour. One of my favourite, favourite colours. And I like the little brush for this because, now again, this is gently, gently because it can be very dark. And I'm just going to add 
all the way around and starting at the bottom and I'm just coming round my tape and I'm building up a nice bit of depth of colour and at the top here I want it quite deep if I move that out of the way and this is quite dark and I almost want to build up that so I'm just going to turn it round just come in on the tape and I'm sorry if it messes with your head upside down I just find it easier to work this way so such a deep colour I'm always dabbing on the lid and always going on the tape first and I'm really adding that deep bit of colour under where those cobwebs are and then at the top here I want it quite dark and then right down this side and I want to add if I turn it round almost I always think of Halloween and sort of horror films there being these dark clouds over the moon so that's what I want to add so what I'm going to do is again come into the tape and then just drag that colour across can you see so it gives me almost that mystical so this is the midnight blue but again I would always go on the, the low tack tape first and then just drag the colour across and the same on this side we can have another and I just think for me it gives a little bit more atmosphere and looks like one of those mystical skies and then also I just want to add a little bit of shade under the books and the pumpkin here and then we'll just add a little bit of colour because you have two options. You can keep the panel going down or you could finish it there. But I'm just going to keep it going down so we'll add a bit of shade. Maybe just a little bit in here. And again, these brushes are fabulous for this. You're almost painting with them. And then what I'm going to do, I want some water splats and I want to add it before I take the tape off. So water brush, I'm just going to give it a bit of a tap and then we'll add, oh, going to sneeze, oh, 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 excuse me, I tried to be quiet. Have you ever tried to do that, a quiet sneeze? It wasn't easy. <laughs> all the things that happen so we'll give that a little bit of faux bleaching just so we almost get some sparkly little bits in as well with the, the clouds and I don't want it to be too faux bleached so I'm going to dry that off now the other thing I like to do that low tack tape from Lavinia fabulous comes off as you know so easy but I'm going to bring my heat tool in two things it'll dry my card where we've had those little water splats but also that low tack tape it'll just help it i'll just whisk some on the back and then what it means is look that tape beautiful look fire that in the bin and then we're at the stage where we can take our masks off and what i'm going to do can you see now don't tell anyone but obviously i've missed a little bit of stamping there look now I've got two options, I could draw it in, but what I'm actually going to do is with my little brush, just add, and I'm keeping the mask there, so I can add some shading. So it'll just look like it's shading because the books are behind the pumpkin anyway. So like I say, you could draw it on or just add, I think we'll just go for a little bit of shading there. And then... So you see how that's just filled in, that space. Now, with the ink that's on my brush, I'm just going to add a little bit of colour. I'm not adding any more ink, so I'm going to pop the lid on. Then I'm not tempted to dip. And I just want to take the whiteness off the pumpkin, because I don't want to add too much colour. As I say, I want to keep almost a lot of the monochromatic tones on everything. So I'm just bringing in a little bit and just on the books, just to sort of, and I just think that that blends in better. 
In fact, I might just go a little bit darker. What did I say? I wasn't going to dip and then I did. Do you ever do that or is that just me? But I'm just thinking if we had a little bit at the top look and a little bit more at the bottom, it just helps make him look a bit more 3D. Now, you could leave this as a purely monochromatic. And often what I do, to be honest, is take a photograph at this stage and then finish the design. And then almost I can compare the two and have a look. But I think, I must admit, I fancy actually making another one of these and leaving it monochromatic and adding it to my journal and making it part of a story. So that's one thought, that's one thing you can do because I've got to be honest, I do like it like that. But today we're going to add a little bit of colour. So as I've gone for pink, I've got three of my Zig Clean Colour pens and the colours I've got, I know you like to know, I've gone for... So I've got number 27, which is the dark pink, 21, which is the light carmine, and 202, oh, that's a high number, isn't it? The peach pink. I always think they're going to, if they're all pinks, they're going to be sort of close numbers, but... And all I'm going to do is add colour to the wings here. So I'm going to put my deeper colour where I know there's going to be shade. So along the base there. And then take the lids off I like to just take all the lids off then I'm going to come in with my next pink pick a little bit up of the darker pink oh that's lovely so it'll blend and then just add the lighter colour look and then finally come in with my light pink this is nice because it's almost sort of an orangey pink and then I just want to blend that pink and then I'm just going to go over the whole three colours with that light colour and blend them all and then just finally with my dark pink I'm coming back in at that base just add in a little bit and, and just that little pop is enough that's all all I want with that the lovely pinks so we'll pop them over there but what I decided I did want to do was add some lovely highlights and I've gone for my Signo. Now this is the metallic range. I've been using these a lot recently and this is the gold. So what I'm going to do is just where he's got these lovely marks. I'm just going to add and we can just edge these lovely wings here, look. And if I want to add a couple of highlights, because I'm not going to come in with my white Posca, so where I'd add highlights with my white, I'm just going to use my gold. So maybe a couple on the eyes, a couple on here, maybe. I don't want to overcook it, but also the gold is nice to just add a little bit of detail to the books. So again, we can just add a little bit of gold leafing just on the spine here look now I don't want them all to be the same so I'm just gonna and again you can take your time and decide exactly where but what I do like is my wink of Stella I can come in with my wink of Stella and almost just move the gold a little fuzzy the edge but also it adds a little bit of sparkle I was so happy when I found out I could do that. So again, I can just add on my lamp look a little bit of gold. And then I want to add a little bit of sparkle with my wink of Stella and some. And look, I'm picking up that gold and almost painting with it. So it almost makes a gold wink of Stella. Now, I don't know if you can see that. So it's the Wink of Stella, but it's almost got a gold edge to it. And then, obviously, we need Wink of Stella on our spider's webs, don't we? I think it just adds such a lovely touch. And then on the wings. And I'm leaving the wings last because sometimes you can pick up a little bit of the clean colour on so 
if I get a little piece of copy paper so when I've done that I tend to just see there's a little bit of pink there so I tend to just run my brush clear so that's why I left that till till the end And again, you could leave it like that, but just for a little bit of extra sort of moodiness, I'm just going to come in with my um, pan pastel. And this is the white fine pearl medium one. And I love this one. I've got my applicator here. And I'm just going to dab it on the moon. And then where I've got those clouds, just little bits here and there. So between this and the Wink of Stella, I've got those lovely, almost, I think, sort of um, moody, spooky sort of tones. So if I just bring that up and show you, can you see? So in the different lights, and what I love about these, if this was a card and somebody popped it up on, say, the mantelpiece, as you walked around the room, it would sparkle and you would see different bits when you were walking round. So I'm going to bring in the finished one. So as I say, the only difference is, is I've added my lovely blow away the cobweb sentiment on here. Now, like I say, there are so many different things you could leave it monochromatic, add that hint of colour. I mean, I just think it's such a lovely design. And I do think he works really well. He was our small frog. So again, if you've got him, I think he just goes with this collection so well. And I love that, that Tracy's thought about it and given his new stamps that go with our, our existing stamps. I don't like to say older stamps. Always makes me feel a bit old like me, older. Mm. <laughs> anyway, I hope you've enjoyed our catch up today. And I hope everything's okay with you. So I'm sending you a big hug anyway. Time for me to go and walk, Eric, although it's raining, so we're going to get wet. But hey-ho, it'll be fresh, won't it? You take care. I'll see you again tomorrow. Love and hugs from me. Bye for now.